There are many situations where we'll encounter resistance of mass transport in which the distance over the diffusion occurs changes with time. Let's analyze this situation. We consider that we have a reaction between a molecule A in the fluid phase and a solid particle composed of B. So let's draw what this situation looks like physically. So we have this spherical particle of solid B and it has some initial radius R0. And so since B is being reacted away, the radius is changing with time, it's shrinking. So we have this core that's decreasing in radius with time. So in this process, we have three key steps. We have diffusion of A through a boundary layer to reach the surface of the solid particle B. We have reaction between A and B at the surface of the particle. And then we have diffusion of C, the product, into the bulk. So this model, which we'll call the shrinking core model, describes many different physical situations which you can encounter. So for example, we could have a porous particle that contains solid catalysts inside of it, and this particle could be deactivated by coking. So essentially we have carbon filling up the pores of this porous particle. So to regenerate the catalyst, we can oxidize away this carbon. So here we have reaction between solid carbon and gaseous oxygen to form a gaseous product CO2. So as the carbon is oxidized away from the outside in, we have this shrinking core of deactivated particle. So this is perfectly analogous to this shrinking core model where carbon is our solid particle B, oxygen is our reactant A, and CO2 is our product C. This shrinking core model could also describe the dissolution of a drug in the body. So if we ingest this pill, it's going to be dissolved, and so we'll have a radius that changes with time. This could also, for example, describe the oxidation of a silicon chip to form an oxide layer. So here we have diffusion of oxygen through a thin oxide film to reach an interface with silicon where it can react to form SiO2. So here this oxide provides a resistance to mass transport, the diffusion of oxygen, and this resistance is going to change with time as the oxide grows thicker. So going back to our shrinking core model, here we want to quantitatively describe changes in the radius with time for different physical situations. So the first situation we'll consider is where the reaction between A and B is limiting the overall rate. So here the rate of consumption of A is going to be unaffected by transport processes and only dependent on the surface reaction rate. So here the reaction rate which we can write the change in number of moles of A with respect to time, depends on a reaction rate constant, the concentration of A in the gas phase, and the surface area available for reaction. So this will be equal to four pi r squared, where the radius here of the particle is a function of time. So here we're assuming we have a fixed concentration of A in the gas phase, and that B is a solid of unit activity. So we can write dNB, the change of number of moles of B, as a function of the density and the change in volume. So the volume is gonna be decreasing with time. So we can express the volume as 4 thirds pi r cubed, where again here, the radius is a function of time. So this will become the density of our particle times 4 pi r squared dr. So if we want the change in number of moles of b with respect to time, this is just going to be minus rho b times 4 pi r squared dr dt. So here, since we have a one-to-one -one stoichiometry between a and b, so for every mole of A that reacts, one mole of B reacts, we can equate the change in number of moles of A with respect to time to the change in number of moles of B with respect to time. So equating these two expressions, we can write an equation that looks like this, where here four pi r squared will cancel on both sides. So here now we have a differential equation for the radius with respect to time. So we can separate and integrate this expression. So we'll integrate r from an initial radius r naught to some final radius r, we can pull all of our constants out of this integral and we'll integrate dt from zero to t. So this gives an expression for our radius as a function of time. It's equal to the initial radius minus k naught times the concentration of A in the gas phase divided by the density of the particle times time. So that's our expression for the radius of the shrinking core with respect to time for the situation that the surface reaction is limiting. So let's consider the second situation where mass transport is limiting the rate. So our expression for the change in moles of B is going to be the same. So this will be just the density times dV. So that will be minus rho B times four pi r squared dr. So here our change in number of moles with respect to time for A, we can write as just the 
flux by diffusion of A. So this will be equal to a mass transport coefficient times the concentration gradient, which will be concentration of A in the gas phase in the bulk minus that at the surface. So this flux will be dependent on surface area. So this will be multiplied by the surface area available for diffusion, four pi r squared. So here, if mass transport is limiting, the reaction will be fast enough to deplete A at the surface, so CAS will tend towards zero. So our flux by diffusion is just going to be the mass transport coefficient times the concentration of A in the gas phase times four pi r squared. So again, equating the change in number of moles with respect to time of A and B, we can write minus rho B times dr dt is equal to the mass transport coefficient times the concentration of A in the gas phase. Here we need to take into account that the mass transport coefficient is a function of the radius. So we can write the mass transport coefficient as the effective diffusivity of A divided by the distance for diffusion, which I'll label delta. So here the distance for diffusion, this boundary layer thickness is going to be the initial radius R0 minus the radius at any time R. So going back to our picture, you can see here that the distance that A needs to diffuse is the difference between the initial radius and the radius at any time t. So plugging this into our expression, we can write R0 minus R dr. This is equal to the diffusivity of A times the concentration of A in the gas phase divided by the density of our particle dt. And so we can integrate this expression with the appropriate limits. So we'll integrate dr from R0 to R and we'll integrate dt from zero to t. Integrating this expression and solving for r, we get an expression that looks like this. So it's equal to the initial radius minus two times the diffusivity of A times the concentration of A in the gas phase times time divided by the density of our particle rho b to the one half. So here we can see how we can describe the change in radius with respect to time for two different situations where we have surface reaction limiting or external diffusion limiting. So this shrinking core model allows us to describe situations where we have a change in the distance needed for diffusion with respect to time for systems involving coupled reaction and diffusion.